This video is a twofer. Line plots and measures of central tendency. First we'll talk about line plots. A line plot is basically a cross between a number line and a bar graph. And the most important thing when you're constructing a line plot is to be neat. Like any type of statistical graph, it's meant to be used as a quick visual reference. It shouldn't be so sloppy that you have to actually reinterpret it and redo the problem to figure out the data. So let's take a look at how a line plot is constructed. Here we have a problem uh, regarding various T's and their prices. And what we need to do is to construct a line plot in order to graph this information. So we'll go ahead and construct a straight line. And the numbers on the number line represent the prices of each type of T. Instead of using X's on our number line, we're going to use the way the um, T's are ranked. So we're going to use the letters V, G, and F as opposed to just plain X's. After we've done this, we can do data analysis. And that's basically just looking at the data represented and making some observations. So based on our data here, we can see that FAIR is right around the middle uh, at 21. You can get a very good T, or a good T, I should say, at 7 cents, but an expensive good T would be at 43 cents. Oh, scratch that, 42 cents. Here's another example uh, regarding breaths per minute for men and women, and I'll let, go ahead and let it set up. And from here, we can see the average breathing rate is right around 13 for probably both men and women. However, women have a breathing rate, at least one example, uh, down to 10. And the highest breathing rate is up at 16 for men. Now we're going to look at measures of central tendency. And those are just numbers or pieces of data that can represent the whole set of data. three types of measures of central tendency, and it's not limited to these, but these are the ones we're going to study, mean, mode, and median. You've probably worked with all of these in the past, so let's take a look at an example. We can use our line plot to organize our data, and I would encourage you to do this because it's going to be far easier to analyze the data this way. So we just go across and put them in numerical order on our line plot. And once we have our line plot constructed, it's very easy to find the mode. And of course, that is the number that comes up the most. So we can see that number eight is our mode. Trying to find our median is actually fairly simple on this too. We just work from the outer edges and go in towards the middle. And the median for this problem is 15. And the one last piece of uh, measure of central tendency we need to find is the mean, which we typically refer to as the average, but really all three of these examples are the average. So we just need to add up our, the sum of the numbers, divide them, and we will have our mean. Let's take a look at an example um, using the line plot again. The benefit of doing it this way is you don't have to put the numbers in order. It's kind of done for you, as I stated before. From here, we can easily find the mode, the one that comes up the most. Again, this is why it's important to be neat. Finding the median, we're just going to be working towards the center there. And the median is going to be 34. And then finally, the mean, we're going to add those, uh, all the numbers up, divide by the number of numbers we have, so to speak. And one more example here. This is how you would do it without a line plot, just getting the numbers in order. The problem with this method is it's real easy to forget a number. You can still find the median the same way, working towards the middle, 81 and a half. There for our median. Our mean, we're going to have to add all the numbers up and divide by the amount of numbers we have. It'll be 79. 
And for this particular example, there is no mode. 